Hello everyone, my name is Praful Kumar and today I am recording this video for project 2 for the subject design and analysis of reconfigurable systems. Today I will be designing a 32 bit counter. So I will be assigning the last 4 bits that is the MSP bits, last 4 MSP bits uh, to the LEDs of the FPGA board. So how you do that is you go to file first. We have to create a project. So you click on new project wizard here and then click on next I'm gonna choose a folder so I'm gonna create a new folder called FPGA project 2 and select this folder so I'm gonna give a module name so let me give LED counter click on next uh, for timing I'll keep this project empty I'm not willing to add any files so let's click next so here I have to select uh, our board that is cyclone 5 and it's cyclone 5 SE mainstream so here it is F531C6 which is this one I'm gonna select this I'm gonna click next I don't have to do any changes here so click on next click on finish so click on yes here it's gonna take some time it will create the project now yeah as you can see we have successfully created a project here so the next step would be to create a Verilog file so we are gonna click on file click on new and then here you select Verilog HDL file click on ok so I have already written a very low code here so if you can see I have assigned the last 4 MSB bits to a register called count so the next step would be to create a STC file you have to click on new here and then here you have to choose a synopsis design constraints file click on ok so you will get a window like this so you have to give the constraints here is right here in this so this is nothing but a constraint to the file of from synopsis so since I have already created a file here you can see I have given the constraint uh, for the clock period so the next step would be to assign pins so the way how you do that is uh, and before you assign the pins you have to take care of something that is you should not compile the code before you assign the pins if you uh, compile the code then uh, the Cortis Prime will automatically assign random pins so uh, this is something we should be taking care of so to assign pins go to assignments click on pin planner here so now you can see a window like this so initially when you do this you won't be having any of these nodes so you click on the new node and then you give a name to the node and then you have to uh, give pin location here so as soon as you do this you will be able to see the voltage fitter location and all of this stuff so you don't have to give direction so once you compile the code uh, Cortis Prime will automatically assign the direction based out from your code so since I have already compiled the code you can see the pins here uh, that has been assigned to the different registers okay once you do this the next step would be to create a .sy file the way how you do it is you compile the code so to generate a .sy file you have to simulate this assembler once you click on this Will, the compiler will automatically generate a .sy file in the output directory so let me show you so if you could see this is my project directory and if I go to output files I can see counter LED so this is the .sy file that is generated by the program so the next step would be to program the FPGA so you double click on program device here so once this is done you click on hardware setup choose the device 
and then you click auto detect so you select the device click on yes so here you have to right click go to edit change file and then you select the SOA file here you select the SOA file click on open ok now we have successfully selected the file you you should take this option that is program and then what you do is you click on start so once you do this you can see the progress has been successfully completed so let me show you the FPGA board here so if you could see we have uh, our FPGA board here so this is the power cable we have connected and this is a blaster cable that we have connected and uh, connected to my laptop here so if you can see this is 4 bit MSB and this is down counting so we have assigned the switch to up count or down count direction to select the direction so now it is down counting currently so now I'll switch it to up counting and I'll show you so this is up counting right now so it should be 0 1 1 0 now yeah there it is so now this will be 1 yeah so next this will be 1 and all zeros yes so uh, we, since we have not uh, flashed it right now if you i'll show you let's let's uh, turn off the fpga and then we'll turn it on so we don't have the bitstream data right now and it doesn't work so now i'm going to show you how you can flash it to the memory of fpga so the way how you can do it is you have to first convert the dot soa file into dot jsc file so you go to file you can choose this option convert programming files and you will see a window like this so you have to select GIC here that's the file format we are looking for and we have to select our device so you go to cyclone 5 and then you select this as active serial you look for EPCS128 EPCS128 which is here once I select this, I'm gonna click OK. So this should be active serial mode. So once it is done, you click on flash loader, click on add add device, you select cyclone 5. So here this is 5. Let me yeah, this is the one ICS EMA5. You click OK. So I've selected the device. Now you have to select the SOA file, you click on this, click on add file, go to output file, so here is the SOA file generated, click on this, click open. So now after this is done, you click generate. So since I have already created a file, I am gonna just click on no. Once that is done, the next step would be to program the device. You double click on this. Now you have to do hardware setup. Okay, this is already done. So we don't have to do this again. You click on auto detect. Select this device. Click OK. Click on yes. So you right click on this. Go to edit. Change file and then here you have to select the JSC file click on this click ok ok now you can see the memory here so we are going to program uh, our code into this memory so that even if you restart or even if you lose the power into the FPGA board you still have the code bitstream code that is encrypted so you take this option and then you click on start once you click on start you'll be able to see the progress here so it has started 
uh, to upload the code into the memory so I'm gonna show you the output now so now if you can see here we have 100% completion so if you see we are getting the output so currently this is in up count mode so it's up counting so now it will be 101 so now this will be 110 yeah it should be 111 yeah now i'll show you let's say if you turn off the fpga board and again turn it on so since the bitstream has already been loaded into the memory of the fpga board so uh, we don't have to again re-upload uh, the bitstream file so if you let's say if i open this up and then i'll reconnect it and i will I, again i'll turn it on so we are having the output this is when you flash uh, it into the memory of fpga